Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. Host Maddie Margarita here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday morning, SCWA turns our Facebook page over to a new author, or in this case, returning author, to talk about their books. This morning, we welcome back Eric Beatner. Hi, Eric. Hi there. Um, Eric is uh, has been hailed. I love your bio, by the way. Has been hailed as the new maestro of noir by Ken Bruin and the 21st Century's Answer to Jim Thompson by Lit Reactor. He has written more than two dozen novels, and his short stories have been featured in over 30 anthologies. Along with the way, along the way, he's been nominated for an ITW Award, a Seamus, a Derringer, and three Anthony Awards. And here's the PS: he's won none of them. But just that's a group that um, is great to be nominated with and be included in. Absolutely, yes. I, I've I've enjoyed all the nominations, and uh, it it truly is an honor just to be uh, on those lists, even if you don't come away with a with a statue. So I, I have a question, and we didn't talk about this beforehand. Are you still editing? I am. Yeah, my day job is working uh, as a television editor and producer, and uh, ever since the pandemic hit, I've been able to work from home which has been fantastic for me <laughs> because living in LA, I, I get, you know, two hours of my life back every day. So I don't have to commute and I see my kids a lot more. It's been great. So you've had um, also um, some time maybe to sneak around and write a little. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm a nighttime writer. I, I, I like to write, uh, you know, after everyone's gone to bed and, and the house is quiet and, and there's no distractions. I know some people like to get up at four or five in the morning and do that. I am not a morning person, never have been. So I stay up way too late. I'm, I'm with you. If you ever get bored, you can text me. I'm awake. Okay. Good. Uh, so, so you, you have had um, time or found time to write a new novel. Do you have, do you have a copy with you? I do. There yes. Back, right? The new one is called there and back. Um, uh, you know, the, the way publishing is, uh, is it is glacial in pace. And uh, this one, I actually uh, was written about five years ago. And it, it took this long uh, to, to make it out. To, to um, finally uh, erupt into the world. Yeah. Well, you know, I love the, the premise of the story. We were um, talking about it earlier. Also, you never choose easy things to write, even when you're writing humor, which is hard to write, and all of those things. So tell us a little bit about There and Back. Well, it's about a group of young executives at a, a tech firm, and they are vying for a promotion. And one of the last stages is they get sent into the wilderness on a team building expedition, you know, with a company. And I, I know corporate America loves to do this, and they love to send these young urban up and comers out into the woods where they have no experience and no business being out there, but they're with a guide. It's all very safe and everything, but they're going to sort of test their metal in the boardroom by somehow making them, you know, run a ropes course and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this being a, a thriller, uh, things go horribly wrong. And uh, this group is stranded out there uh, alone and with only their own lack of skills to survive not everyone makes it home alive. And the way that the book plays out is it's an alternating chapter. So you see a little bit of what happened out there during this tragedy and, and the incredibly difficult and trying time that they have for several weeks out in the woods, alternated with their the survivors return to their supposedly normal life and getting back into, you know, seeing family and their jobs and stuff after they've been through this harrowing experience. And one of the things that was very interesting to me about the story that really sparked the idea wasn't so much what happened out there, but it really was this transition back after they'd you know, both been through this trauma and the things that they had to do to survive, some of them lost a little piece of their humanity uh, in a way. And you know, can they get it back? Can you come back from being that close to the edge of survival and just reintegrate back into your own life and treat everything as normal. And uh, for some people, it it does not uh, make an easy transition. Well, I, I it feels um, that feels like a, a tall order, but knowing your ability to create character, um, I love your characters. Thank you. Um, so how did you go about deciding who would be what and what kind of chemistry and dynamic? would have between the characters and what kind of characters 
this sounds to me like a, like you were saying before a structural on the yeah you know i think it really is the characters when the characters start to come to life that's when i know i have a book you might have a great a great plot idea or a great little kernel of a story but it's not until the characters show up that you really know that you have something to that would make a full novel and for this group i i think it was really fun to play with the this dynamic of, of this you know young execs who are ambitious and like i say there, there's this promotion on the table in front of them so they're competing with each other they're sort of trying to elbow each other out and some people are you know not playing fair and that's all just in the corporate world in in the city then when they get out into the woods when their very lives are on the line now how does that manifest itself and you have some of the characters are are a little weaker and their the weakness is going to be their downfall when you know their their life is at stake and the ones who are you know, willing to do whatever it takes in a business environment, you know, now you get out there where it's, hey, it's my life or yours, that really starts to take over. And it's almost this, it becomes this animal instinct. So those characters were fun to play with too. Like, I, you know, I, one of the characters, Grady, is really, he's definitely kind of the villain. I think he's the guy that you, that you love to hate is certainly what I've heard from, from readers so far. But, you know, a character like that, where he, you never know what he's going to be capable of, I think it is really fun to write and and gives the readers really something to latch onto that's both you know juicy in that way that villains always are but also he's very unpredictable and that's one of the things I always love to have in a book is you never know what turn it's going to take and you never know who might not make it out of the next chapter alive. So it sounds to me a lot like uh, maybe you're drawing from your professional life in Hollywood. <laughs> well, in a way. Luckily, no. I, <laughs> everyone in my business has, has been pretty congenial so far, but, but we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, maybe you could set that night that next scenario up in a writer's room. I would like to hear. I would like to read that. that yeah, would, that would be. Uh, fun. I, I, those those are very competitive, and I think a lot of times it's uh, it's it's all kind of under your breath or, or behind someone's back. It's <laughs> you know. yeah, when you're going to get the um, cigarette or the coffee that that stuff happens. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think that that's something that everybody can relate to, whether you worked in a corporate environment or worked in a nonprofit or wherever yeah. people gather in more than two people. Um, right. Those dynamics come into play. Um, how fun was that writing? The dynamics between the, the characters? It was it was a lot of fun. I think, uh, you know, th there were times when I, I will admit I felt bad that I killed off one or two of these folks. I, you know, I usually I'm I'm pretty uh, brutal and emotionless about it. But some of these people I was like, oh, boy, it's good for the story. He's got to go. But no, oh, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> yeah, connected. Uh, well, I, I like that. OK, that shows your humanity as well. Yeah. Um, some authors just totally lack that. Um, <laughs> and then getting to write a number of different characters and having them sound different. You know, everybody's like, oh, well, they're different characters, but you can't say, well, this is a different character. You have to show that. So how did you approach the dialogue and, and differentiating them other on the page? Yeah, I think it's one of the things that, that really unites the, uh, writers and, and just the way that we look at the world is we're observers and we're listeners, uh, uh, you know, try not to be in, in a creepy way, but every time a natural writer is out in the world, you're listening for the way people talk and you're listening for dialogue and you're just hearing those subtle differences. And I think it is the thing that separates characters on the page, like you say, which I think is, is a very important thing. You know, you don't, you never want to confuse readers and you never want to have, you know, male and female characters that sound exactly the same. You never want to have people of different age groups, different ethnic backgrounds. Everyone does have their own unique thing. And sometimes it's, it's just dialing into that one unique, uh, you know, either a speech pattern or a, a word that they use frequently or something like that, that, that really, a, you know, A, it differentiates them on the page, as you say, but it also helps you as the writer kind of latch on to who that character is. If they have whatever that little quirk is, it helps me identify who that person is. It gives me a little a little uh, unlocking into who that character is, you know, beyond just the things that they say and how they say it. So those are the kind of fun things to discover. You hope that you discover it in your first draft or, or early on in the page. You don't have to find something when you're 
in the final third of the book and you go, oh, this would be great. Oh, now I have to go back and revise. <laughs> in your 10th draft. Um, so as you're writing uh, all these characters and the story is moving along and you're getting attached to them, do you know who is going to meet their final uh, destiny uh, before you start writing? Or are, are you writing and go, oh, uh, no, okay, she's in the woods. Oh, God, I'm tired. Yeah, she goes. <laughs> you know, what, what, how, how do you decide who goes when you? I, I'm an outliner uh, for all my books, and, and this one especially was, uh, you know, just the structure being what it was. Uh, you know, normally I'll just sort of type out on on a piece of paper, and I'll have, you know, bullet points, and it'll be two pages, three pages for for an outline. This one was note cards taped to my wall, color coded for out there and back here, and it, it was really complicated in a lot of ways I had to sort of stop and take a few days at a couple points and reevaluate make sure I was getting everything right and yeah really make those hard decisions of uh, this person's got to go but uh, yeah I've, I it was all all meticulously plotted out beforehand so what was your uh, favorite part of the book of writing the book I think it was it, it was really exploring how these people tried to integrate back into their world because I think you know, in any sort of trauma, like if you hear something on on a news story, you, you know, someone someone was lost in the woods and they were rescued. That's where the story ends. They, they they get saved and it's a happy ending. But is it really a happy ending? How do you come back from going to that edge of of humanity and that extreme? And I think that was the thing that really interested me in the story was seeing how these people come back and you know, the thing that I try to do in all of my books and the thing that I always look for when I'm reading a book is the ability to put yourself in that story and say, yeah, boy, what would I do? Would I be able to come back from that? Would I be so forever changed after this sort of trauma that you couldn't have the same connection with your family and your friends and your coworkers? That that was the most interesting part for me to explore for sure. And this book feels like a huge departure from some of your other books. I, in a way, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it's still very much a, a thriller in the terms of like, it's it's driving forward, you're, you're always anticipating the next move, and hopefully always questioning what's going to happen next. But there is also a little bit of a mystery of what really happened out there. These people are keeping secrets of the truth of, of what happened out there. So that was fun to, you know, slowly reveal things for the, for the audience in, in, in a very calculated way. Uh, but yeah, I think it's 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 not it's not a book that's putting criminals in in the forefront. These are ordinary people. It's it's you know not private investigators. Not right. Yeah. Right. So I, I think you're right. In in a way, it was a little bit different, but it was a unique challenge in that way. So it, when is would you recommend people buy there and back, and then buy your series, or buy your series and then buy there and back, or maybe buy everything, buy well, buy all of that. I wouldn't say no to that, but yeah, I, I think any writer who has a body of work, you're always the most intrigued by the shiniest, newest things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people say that when, when, you know, this is my 30th book. So people, I get that a lot. Oh, where should I start? And it's always like, well, this is the newest, the latest and greatest. I think this is a great place to start with my work. And yeah, if you like this then uh, dig into the back catalog. Yeah, there, there you go. So that's, that feels very, um, uh, Harlan Coben esque and ready for Netflix, um, uh, if hey, you ask me. I'm so, around, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we're, uh, we talked about, the book came out November November 2nd, right? Uh, first, I think, yeah. First, November 1st. So it's available right now. Yep. Right? Uh, um, where can they find it? Where can people, uh, where can readers find it? Well, uh, readers can find it, of course, at uh, your favorite online retailers. And uh, I, I love if you would uh, go and order it through your local independent bookstore. And, uh, you know, ask your library to order a copy. That's always helpful for authors who are on, on small presses. So, it, yeah, any place that you think you can get a book, you will be able to find this book. Great. And speaking of independent bookstores, uh, you have a local signing coming up, right? That's right. I'll be down uh, this weekend. I'll be down in Orange County at the wonderful Book Carnival uh, on December 3rd. We're going to be there at uh, three or 4 p.m., uh, it'll be myself with the three other writers, a writer named Lawrence Allen, who's got his debut novel, uh, a writer named Matt Witten, uh, who's a, a great writer, and then uh, an author from uh, coming in from New York, uh, Lee Matthew Goldberg, uh, will be there. 
uh, it, we're all going to be in conversation. I'm going to have some questions for them. Uh, and then we're going to take the show on the road and we'll be at, uh, at book jewel up in LA in the Westchester neighborhood, uh, on Sunday. Uh, so will there be a couple of opportunities to see some, some live booking this weekend? Well, it's nice to see that you are now traveling with an entourage. Yes. yes. Um, and, uh, please say hi to Lee. Lee has been here. Uh, excellent, excellent. uh yeah. On the hump day book tour. All right. So uh, please send him our regards um, and we will hope, hope everybody turns out who is available to come and see you in person. Come uh, on down. And yeah. also, if you do pick up uh, Eric's book in the library, it's great to support him and write a review. Or yes, even if yes. you buy his book or whatever, reviews sell books to other people. So um, please, if you don't feel bad about that, you can still support him by um, leaving a review. Um, Always appreciated. Okay. And then one final uh, question, because we're running late, but I just love talking to you. So what? I'm in charge. Um, what, what do you hope people um, feel when they finish the book? Well, I, I hope that people really do put themselves into the story and, and, and get that sense of, of how would I react? What would I do? And, you know, I think that everyone is going to connect with different characters. I think it's interesting, you know, when you have this a, a cast of characters like this, an ensemble, it gives the reader an opportunity to identify with not just one person. And, and you know, like I say, there, there, there's men, there's women, so there might be a connection there. There's people who are more ambitious, more laid back, and that might appeal to your personality. So I think there's something there for all types of readers to say, yeah, that, that's probably where I would have fallen in, in this. I, I would have done that or like, oh, I don't like that he or she did that. So that's the thing I think that, that's always interesting is is you to see, you know, because I, I have my ideas about a book, but then you put a book out in the world and it becomes the reader's book. It's no longer my right, book their anymore. Their experience. Right? Yeah, I, I think that's life. one of the most exciting things about being an author is, is hearing what people connected to and, and that you never expected. Well, I hope everybody buys your book and can find a character to identify with and have like that uncomfortable feeling in your stomach if you identify too closely uh, <laughs> with, with, with one of those other characters yeah. or feel good about yourself, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's an adventure. And I want to thank you for being here um, this morning, Eric. We appreciate you coming back, taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, no, best of luck, uh, luck with the book and on the book signing. Hopefully Orange County will turn out in droves to support you. Hopefully. Uh, and yeah. And, and are you working on something now? Can oh, you... always working on something now. My agent has uh, sitting on five uh, manuscripts that we're, we're out there selling. And uh, hopefully I'll be back uh, real soon with another one. You know, we're changing this also to the most prolific. Uh, we're going to add prolific to, to this description of you. Okay. Well, well, hopefully I'll, I'll see you um, at Book Carnival. Everybody, thank you for being here and supporting our authors. We will see you next week. On Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. Thank you.